Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you. Happy to be here. So, as, as uh, she mentioned, my name is Sean Hobson. My title is Chief Design Officer, which is a, a very unique title for higher education. Uh, in terms of how we define design, uh, you can read it on the, on the board here. Most people think it's about how something looks, how something uh, is built, but for us at Arizona State University, this is how we uh, define design. I'm going to be talking about design, I'm going to be talking about research and development. Uh, Arizona State University is advancing on a rather uh, transformative redesign model. Uh, we've been at it for 15 years under the leadership of President Michael Crow. Everything we do, everything I talk about will come back to this fundamental mission. Uh, this mission helps us accelerate, uh, particularly around uh, the notion of being measured by who we include, not by who we exclude and how they succeed. Technology, education, digital education, online education is possible because of this and the culture that it helps create. ASU has 100,000 students. We have quadrupled our research expenditures over the last 15 years. We've doubled our enrollment. We've done all of it with the same faculty. This has earned us uh, a reputation not in the rankings of our programs, but as an innovator throughout education. So we've talked quite a bit at nauseum about the challenge uh, we face both domestically in the U.S., but, but globally for us, we aren't graduating enough students. Uh, for every student, two students that start, only one of them complete within six years. By complete, I mean earn a credential, a degree. Uh, that number is dwarfed by the demand for higher education globally. Uh, this is OECD data. By 2030, we'll need uh, to serve 410 million students. Uh, there's some discussion yesterday about this uh, as well. But suffice to say, uh, to meet that demand, if we wanted to uh, advance on traditional designs, we would have to build four universities with 80,000 students each. We would have to do that every week, every year, for the next 15 years. It's not going to happen. So how are we going to think about new designs to solve the challenges that we face today and solve the challenges that we're going to face tomorrow and in the future? The challenges and the designs of the past are insufficient. Here's another thing that we need to really work on in terms of a design. And the volume's not going to work, so I'm going to skip it. Today, oh. any nuclear country or terrorist is capable of inflicting damage on a massive scale with weapons of... Environmental entropy. The polar ice caps aren't waiting for us to decide if climate change is real. Rising coastal waters, intensifying weather patterns, they're all punching our one-way ticket to... Dystopia. By definition, not perfect. Huxley's Brave New World, Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451, Orwell's 1984. Once considered fiction, these futuristic novels are actually happening right now and they seem to be getting worse. Yes, Miss Newton. Can we fix it? Sorry? I get things are bad, but what are we doing to fix it? Have a good weekend, everybody. <laughs> this might seem familiar uh, to those of us in this room who went through uh, a similar experience in, in high school or in, in college even, but this is the type of design that we need to be really trying to address, and this is the right group to do it. Uh, so really quickly, even if we, uh, you can see the, the massive scale that, that we need to serve by existing models and those not served, here's how typical education is structured, how all of us probably went through the system, one of these three, we started in, in pre-K, we went through K-12, we went to university and then off, off to college. Some went directly into career. Uh, but we need to really be thinking about more of a universal learner model. We're never done learning. How can educational systems be set up to serve people no matter where they are in the process as a universal system? This is a new design framework when you start to think about this. How do your products integrate into a universal learner model? Technology is a big part of it. It's not everything. If there's one thing I could implore on those of you designing tools and technologies, think about the system that you're designing them for. What is the academic culture that you need to consider if you're selling into education, particularly higher education? 
What's the role of the teacher? What's the role of the student, the advisor, the parent? How do all of those things come up with a system that you're developing something to integrate within? This is a, a, a slide that we've been shown plenty of times over the last uh, day or two. Uh, I can say from a university perspective that this is chaos uh, for those of, of you trying to sell into a university. There's no faculty member, there's no administrator uh, who can single-handedly make sense of this. Uh, there is a lot of activity, um, but we also need to be thinking about the people within institutions who are going to make sense of this and work with faculty and work within that culture to make sure we're making intelligent decisions about the use of things like ed tech. These are some of the burning questions that we face at our institution. Uh, there's many of these, but highlighting just a few. Uh, which leads to the, the need and the notion to really invest in, in R&D. Uh, we do a lot of invention at universities. Most of it is outward facing. How do we do R&D inside the university? The average tech company in the top five spends 10 to 20% of their profits in, in R&D. Universities, not so much. So we really need to change that and some universities are really adopting it like ASU. Here's a, a snapshot of some universities that are really good at this. They've developed some of their own IP, some of their own products, but these are where there's hubs that are doing innovation and incubation in an R&D perspective. I was just shocked to be at the Tower of David the other day and see the innovation lab uh, right under the, the ceiling. This is a, an R&D and an incubation hub, uh, right? It was just fascinating to see. Uh, right in the middle of, of such an old meets new uh, context. But it's, it's really exciting to see this type of development uh, in Israel. These are examples of what some of these labs look like across various universities. But what are some of the people? Uh, this is an instructional designer. Uh, for those of you who don't know who these people are, they're very critical to education. They're very critical to higher education systems, K-12 systems. They're the secret innovators within these schools that are helping translate to faculty, to administrators around that chaos I showed earlier and what's possible in terms of outcomes. There's new uh, roles that are coming out. This is a, a report that John Maida, design and tech report. Computational designer is a new role that's emerging that's doing programming, working with systems to design for scale in the millions and the billions. Uh, so this is something to, to watch and read if you're interested. In Ed Plus, we are that entrepreneurial service unit within the university. Uh, running out of time here, but you can see our growth relative to the students we serve on the top, uh, the, the number of students we graduate, the amount of degree programs that students can take without ever having to come to the physical campus, but also the R&D efforts and the partnerships that underlay that success. So it's important for us to think about how we can network, how can we partner, how can we work through other institutions to help drive access student enrollments into the university. Uh, there's many other programs and projects that once you have this R&D platform, you can plug into at the university. I encourage you to go to our website. It's edplus.asu.edu to learn more about some of our projects. And I'm gonna skip through these and say, here are the things that we're really excited about and where we need help. From those of you who are developing ideas and products, take a snapshot of this, come talk to us. We're trying to scale these in new learning realms. Thank you very much.